Okay, all these AI tools and that game, well, not this PlayStation, but games in general are powered by one company, NVIDIA. But how is a graphics company, because we've seen that logo on laptops, especially gaming laptops, leading the fourth revolution, the AI revolution? And how is ChatGPT and Bard and Midjourney and Photoshop and all of these other tools connected to NVIDIA? Well, today I have an interesting story of this company, even I didn't know. We've divided this case study into three parts where we'll talk about the inflection points and in the end we'll talk about the possibility of where Nvidia's stock can go, which looks like this right now. So, we'll first start with its origin, which is the origin story. Subscribe karo yaar. So let's understand what happened and how they started. Around 1993, these three guys started NVIDIA. They were working in some other company at the time and they wanted to raise money to well build this new company called NVIDIA. And they went to this guy, Don Valentine, who is the head of Sequoia. Yes, the Sequoia, which is now peak. 15 partners. They raised $2 million at a $6 million valuation, which at that time might have been a pretty risky bet. But now, in hindsight, pretty good investment. Then started their gaming revolution, which then brings us to phase two, the gaming era, from 1993 to the early 2000s. Now, back then, they had this chip over here, NV1, which was used by the Saturn console by Sega, which meant this was a graphics card powering the games that Sega was selling. Now, the problem with this card was three. It took a lot of power, it was difficult to program, and took a lot of memory. Now, the problem that happened is that neither did Sega do well, nor did the games and therefore the graphics card. And because of this, 60% of NVIDIA's workforce had to be laid off. It was a tumultuous journey and its first failure. In fact, they had only a few days of money left until the then Sega CEO gave them some money to actually survive. Six months. But those six months were enough for them to research and build something. Eventually, they launched a new graphics card, the Riva 128. This graphics card was 300% faster and what do you know, in about 3-4 to four months, it sold 1 million units. Ha 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 ha, is probably what Jensen said because he made a lot of money at the time. But he spent a lot of time and probably deserved it. This was its first big success. Now this success enabled Nvidia to order a multi-year deal with TSMC, the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer. Now imagine from their perspective, they are doing the designing, manufacturing is being outsourced and they get economies of sales. So their profit margin increases a little bit because the cost is less they've committed to actually manufacture for many years. In 1999, just at the cusp of the dot-com boom, they released GeForce 256. They marketed it not as a graphics card, but as a GPU. Better graphics, faster processing, this is the future. And lo and behold, it sold a lot of units as well. The beauty now was that all of this was coming together and Microsoft with its Xbox said, we need a GPU, can you do something? And they said, of course we can. $500 million was the deal they signed with Xbox and their revenues hit more than a billion dollars. I think this is the only company like this which had more than a billion dollars in revenue. But that was pretty much the last business success they saw. Look at this chart over here, you'll see that Nvidia never really crossed that high. It's been mostly sideways. But now they've pulled a new rabbit out of the hat. A new spark. You know, Reliance? Very similar. Reliance is moving sideways for a very long period of time. Big company, what can it do? And then they had Geo. And then Geo was that inflection point where that huge rise happened. I think something similar happened with Microsoft as well. But in this case, Nvidia's new thing was AI. The entire AI revolution that has happened today and we see is being powered by them. But the seeds were sown in about 2006. And that's our inflection point three, the AI era. For many years, computer researchers, which are programmers, require a lot of complex models to be dealt with to output answers. 
Basically, all neural nets, deep learning, research is done using CPUs. But at one point with CUDA, I won't explain what happened, but at that point, people realized that GPUs are better sorted to do this research than CPUs. Basically, a CPU will be a single string doing processing work linearly, but a GPU can actually do parallel processing together or in multi-threads. This meant they're able to do complex problems faster, which meant all new innovation, which is at the hands of researchers, moved to GPUs. And within this, we had artificial intelligence seed being sown all on GPUs. CUDA was one such example which used a GPU. And all the nerds at Silicon Valley got a hard on and said, hey, I want to use GPUs as well. And that shift meant all of AI research from 2006 onwards was happening on GPUs. In fact, even if you look at autonomous vehicles, which requires a lot of processing, things like Walmart or Amazon's actual distribution in warehouses, et cetera, et cetera, all use NVIDIA's GPUs. So if you look at ChatGPT, Midjourney, or any of these AI tools, even those crazy Photoshop tutorials where they select something and, and, ho gaya. what? All of that, uses NVIDIA's GPU capabilities. Now, before that actually works, there has to be some training for that neural net, for that model to actually work. That human reinforcement learning uses the computation power of NVIDIA. Basically, NVIDIA kit chips are powering this shit. And if you look at the financials, it actually makes sense. Look at the revenue of graphics of NVIDIA. So beautiful, right? Now, let me add AI's revenue and you'll see it's pretty close. But you'll notice it's not a graphics company anymore. The AI revenue is said to be the largest segment in its revenue mix. You know what that means, right? NVIDIA is now a legit AI company. Now let's talk about the threats and potential. In threats, all the other tech companies want to create their own AI moat, is what I'm calling it, and make their own chips. So NVIDIA kya karega? And the second thing is NVIDIA gets its chips not from itself, it doesn't manufacture it. It outsources it to TSMC. What if one day we we cannot supply this to you, sorry. Then what will happen? These two are big threats. But let's be positive. It feels like Nvidia is in a good place and by 2025, GPUs will be 1000 times more powerful. And if you think the usage of AI is going to increase and they can dominate, the stock price will reflect that. Tab tak ke liye we have our jobs. Aap scroll karte ro because you are now looking at YouTube, but AI is actually learning and out for you. Be aware. If you like this video, see you in the next one. Smash that like button, that subscribe button. Say something nice in the comments and uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye. Kuda? Acha kuda. <laughs> Did I just say hard on? <laughs> All the nerds go. Apne dimag mein Kratos hu. But but actually nerd hi GPU GPU.